Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back with a massive Al Rahab oil haul. So I just ordered a ton of these oils. Most came from a web from a website called Al Rashad. Um, it's a great website. They carry most of the, if not all, of the Al Rahab oils for two dollars and ninety-five cents a piece. Um, I also have one other oil in here from Orientica, which I am super excited about this one. It is so good. This one was $3.95. So um, anyways, great website. Of course, I am not affiliated at all. I paid for this all with my own money. Um, I just shopped as a normal customer, but I can tell you that they, from the time I placed my order until the time it was at my house, I think it was about four days. It was lightning fast. It was amazing. Um, I'm so excited. It's such a great website, and I'm so excited to like to explore it more. But anyways, um, after I got all of these oils, I took the time to test every single one on my skin, as well as um, these are existing Al Rahab oils that I already had. Sorry, I've got seven here. These are all of the Al Rahab oils that I already had. Um, I took the time to test these on my skin as well. I made notes about what these are all supposed to be dupes for, and I made notes while I was testing them on my skin and smelling them out of the bottle about whether or not I feel like they're actually dupes, like they actually smell like what people say they smell like, um, all kinds of information. So this is gonna be a super long video as it is, so I'm gonna jump right in because I've got so many oils here. So I'm gonna start with all of the oils that I picked up from Al Rashad. Yeah, it was such an amazing experience. Such a great website. They carry so, they carry oils from all different like brands and houses. It's all like Middle Eastern stuff, and it's just really, really awesome. I didn't even know that Orientica had oils like this, and I'm gonna get back on and order every other one that they have. Um, okay, so let's start with. I made notes as to whether I like them or not. I mean, I like. I got serious with this. The first one I picked up is called Dalal. This, I will say, is one that had been recommended to me a ton. It's one that is very talked about and, sorry, I just have to adjust my camera. So, so if it comes back and it looks a little different, that's why. But anyways, for good reason, this one is amazing. This is definitely, hands down, one of my favorite Al Rahab oils, but spoiler alert, there is only I love every single one of these. There are only a couple that I probably won't wear that often just because they're not my jam. But other than that, holy cow. Okay, so Dalau, this one is so good. This one gets compared to a lot of different things like Lyra and I can't even remember all of the other fragrances that people compare this to, but it's like just a ton of them. The one that I felt like it was closest to, in my opinion, was Victor and Rolf Bon Bon. But I like this way better than Bon Bon. But it would be amazing to put this on and then layer Bon Bon over it. I think it would be the most beautiful, like, sweet, yummy, caramely, buttery fragrance. Um, it definitely resembles Lyra is not in the way that it smells. I mean, I guess a little bit, but because it's just kind of one of those sweet, buttery, gourmand type fragrances. This one though, when it dries down on the skin, this one almost gives up, gives off like a cinnamon vibe on me. Some of the sweetness tones down and then it just, I don't know, there's something about this one that is amazing though. I will of course have all of the notes on the screen for you but this was one of my favorites hands down. I don't feel like it's a dupe or a clone of anything. I feel like it's its own fragrance for sure. It does resemble other sweet, yummy gourmand fragrances. The one that I felt like resembled it the most or that it resembled the most was Victor and Rolf Bon Bon, but yeah, this is an amazing, an amazing little $3 oil, so good. None of these are like, on me, I haven't had the experience where any of them are like super long lasting, unfortunately. Um, actually, that's not true. There are a couple that are pretty long lasting, but I can get maybe three hours out of an Al Rahab oil before I feel like I need to reapply, which is totally fine with me. They're $3, so I don't mind at all. But yeah, anyways, that is Dalau. I can't, 
talk about each one for this long or we'll be here forever. That This one was in my top three favorites, though, of all that I got, which is why I'm gushing about it. And I kept them all in their boxes, the ones that came in boxes recently. I kept them all in their boxes so I could show you guys, So because it's hard to see on the little um, bottle. But this one is called Africana. And this one is super, super intense. Um, yeah, this is a super intense fragrance. Yeah, this one I will say was one of my least favorites. Um, this one is almost, and this coming from me says something because I love sweet fragrances, but this one is almost too sweet for me. Oh my gosh, but it smells so, so, I don't want to say almost exactly, but it smells so much like Snow Fairy from Lush. Um, if you guys know the Snow Fairy scent from Lush, this is so, so similar to it. It's super, super saccharine sweet. It's got like a tartness to it. It's fresh. But yes, this one to me was was definitely, and I knew immediately when I smelled this and put it on my skin, I knew immediately, I was like, holy crap, it smells like Lush. It smells like a Lush store, but it does. It smells very, very much like Snow Fairy, but it's funny because when this one dries down, you get this kind of Middle Eastern vibe. So it's like a kind of a slightly Middle Eastern version of Snow Fairy. Yeah, it's good. I like the dry down of this one better. It's like it goes through these stages. I like it when I first apply it. After about five minutes and then for like another 30 minutes, I don't like it. It's very, very sweet and not great. But then when you get to the deep dry down, it really starts to smell like Snow Fairy because it warms. It's... It gets a little bit creamier, but it does have this little Middle Eastern twist to it. But anyways, yeah, that's a, it's a fun one. If you are into Lush Snow Fairy, I think you would really like this one. So anyways, that one is called Africana. Oh, this next one, you guys, this one is so stinking good. Um, this was one that when I ordered it, I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna like that, but holy cow, was I wrong. This one is called Tootie Musk. Can you see that name? I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Tootie Musk, which is such a funny name. Oh my gosh, you guys. This one was one of those that like I didn't realize just how amazing it was until it dried down. And the dry down on this one is, wow, so good. So this one gets compared to the number one fragrance that it was compared to on Fragrantica was a Ramon Monegal fragrance, which is a niche, like a very expensive niche fragrance called Flamenco. And I've never smelled that fragrance. I am dying to get my nose on it now. So I'm going to see if I can figure it. Well, I should be able to order it from Lucky Scent, but I'm going to order a decant of the Ramon Monogle fragrance if I can find it on Lucky Scent to compare it to this because this is amazing. It is so good in the dry down. Um, let me see if I can. Oh my gosh. So when you, when you pr first put it on, it smells of very strong berries. It's a very strong berry. Yeah, it's a very strong berry fragrance at first. And not, you, it smells kind of like a mix of like maybe raspberries and strawberries or something like that. It's sweet and tart, but then it immediately starts to dry down. Oh my gosh, and then some other notes come in and it starts doing something and it starts smelling so much more expensive than it is. It goes from being this kind of, you know, run of the mill berry fragrance to something very unique. Oh my gosh, it's warm. A lot of the sweetness starts to die down and you get, I don't want to say a muskiness. It's almost like a light skin musk and maybe like a, I don't know, maybe like some kind of a light 
floral but without being super floral or super sweet. This one was really hard or is really hard for me to describe because there's just something about this one and yeah I'm super intrigued to smell the Ramon Monocle fragrance because this smells like it could be a niche fragrance once it dries down. It's still a berry fragrance, don't get me wrong, but it's not like a run-of-the-mill berry at all. Once it dries down, it turns into the most beautiful, unique, bright, slightly sweet, fresh berry. Oh, it is so good. This was one of my favorites. This is right up there with Dalal. It's amazing. So that one is called Tutti Musk. It's so good. Oh my gosh, you guys, we're gonna be here for an hour. Okay, next we have got Fantastic. And this is another one that is so good. Um, this is a pretty spot on dupe of Britney Spears' Fantasy and not the reformulated Fantasy, the original white chocolate cupcake and kiwi fantasy. It's super sweet, it's yummy, it's gourmand, and it's a great dupe, a great dupe. So if you're one of those people that really wanted to get your hands on like Britney Spears stage edition because you want that or original uh, fantasy formulation, spend the $3 and get fantastic and it's a really, really good alternative. It's so good. It's yummy and sweet and Britney Spears fantasy. So anyways, that one is called Fantastic and that one is so good. That was, again, one of my most favorites. I felt like it was, I just feel like it's such a good dupe. I've got another Britney Spears dupe in here too, which is super exciting. And I love it because I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the oils on first and layer the fragrances over and hope that it helps with the longevity because I don't get, I don't get a ton of time out of most of my Britney Spears fragrances, but I feel like the, well, except Private Show is really good, but I feel like the oils are really gonna help. Next, we have a beauty. This one is called Moroccan Rose. Did I show you the box of Fantastic? I'm sorry if I didn't. This one is called Moroccan Rose. And this one is stunning. This is just a fresh, green, slightly sweet, shampooy rose. It's like it smells like so many fragrances on the market. There's nothing that I would pinpoint it as. Um, it reminded me a little bit of, or a lot actually, of Juicy Couture uh, Rosé, Viva La Juicy Rosé. It's just beautiful. Very fresh, clean, very slightly sweet, green shampooy rose. This is gonna be a great one to layer any rose fragrance over really, but rose fragrances like Viva La Juicy uh, Rose or my Trusardi Delicate Rose, any of those kind of green, watery, slightly sweet shampooy rose fragrances. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be gorgeous. Or just on its own. It's amazing. It's such a beautiful rose. So anyways, that one is called Moroccan Rose. And Al Rahab does have a ton of rose fragrances. And I've read the reviews on most of them, and that one gets the best reviews. Um, some of the other ones are, like, they have a Tafe Rose one, a Bulgarian Rose one, um, and some others. But And those are, like, I think pretty intense, like very realistic rose scents, but the Moroccan rose is, oh, it's beautiful. Okay, this next one, oh gosh, is such a beauty. So this next one is green tea. The most, the fragrance that m the most people thought this smelled like on Fragrantica was Elizabeth Arden green tea. And in the dry down it does. Out of the bottle it does not. Out of the bottle this has I actually like this a little bit more than Elizabeth Arden Green Tea because this is intensely fresh, intensely citric, but it's got like a pepperiness to it. And I'm usually not the biggest fan of pepper in fragrance, but there's something about 
and I don't even know if there's pepper in this. You'll see the notes will be on the screen. Um, I didn't really look at the notes. I was more just looking to see what people felt like they smelled like. And I was testing them on my skin myself and, and sniffing and seeing what I felt it smelled like. Um, but I didn't actually look at the notes on any of these. So I don't even know if this has got pepper in it, but it smells like it's got this beautiful, faint, almost white pepper kind of note with a ton of citrus and it's green tea, but the green tea doesn't really pop until the dry down. So it's, this is like an intensely fresh fragrance. It's so stunning. Um, I've got my Elizabeth Arden green tea sitting right here. I will be, uh, I will definitely be layering these two a ton because I feel like it's going to be an amazing combination. And it's funny because when you read the reviews, it's like people almost get upset that it doesn't smell exactly like green tea. It smells enough like it in the dry down for sure that I will be very, very comfortable layering them. I just think it's gonna be an amazing combination. So anyways, that one is called Green Tea. It's such a good, I will tell you like 99% of these was such a good $3 spent, seriously. And I'm down in oil rabbit hole right now, so I have another order sitting in front of me, another oil order of 25 more, actually 27 because they sent me a couple of free ones. Um, but yeah, I've got, like oil coming out of my ears right now. Okay, next we have one called Midnight. This box I feel like is really, really pretty. I love, this is like, I would say this, like the darker shade of this box is my favorite color of all time. I'm obsessed with this color. I have a rain jacket this color. I have a Patagonia jacket this color. I just love this kind of dark purpley raspberry color. Okay, but anyways, Midnight is a Spot on dupe for Britney Spears' Midnight Fantasy. I almost, I also get Victoria's Secret Love Spell vibes. So it's kind of something in between, but in the dry down, this smells so, so much like Britney Spears' Midnight Fantasy. It's so beautiful. I will definitely, again, be layering the two, and I just think that it's gonna be so good. Really pretty, like fruits and flowers. It's like a fruity. Midnight Fantasy is a hard one for me to describe, but it does smell like the old Salon Selective shampoo from a long time ago. It's funny, a, a subscriber pointed that out to me like a couple of years ago at this point, maybe even longer. It's been a long time. Um, and as soon as she pointed that out, I was like, holy cow, are you right? It does smell like the old Salon Selectives. In the pink bottle, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Salon Selectives came in a pink bottle with maybe teal writing or something. I don't know. But anyways, great dupe of Britney Spears Midnight Fantasy. That is Midnight. This next one is another, this is in my top five favorite ones that I picked up. And this one is called Secret Lady. Such a silly name, but oh my gosh, who cares? Because it's such a good oil. So, so good. So that is, so this one is Secret Lady. So out of the bottle immediately, this reminded me of Armaf La Femme. I'll pop up a picture of Armaf La Femme so you can see which fragrance I'm talking about. I used to have it. I passed it along because I wasn't reaching for it enough and it was one of those fragrances that I felt like was gonna go off over time, like pretty quickly if I didn't use it up. But this reminded, reminded me a lot of it right out of the bottle. Like when you smell it, it smells very, very much like Armaf La Femme. But when I apply this to my skin and it dried down, it smells so much like Escada Cherry in the Air, which is a long discontinued fragrance that I absolutely love. I adore Cherry in the Air, but it is very difficult to find and it is very expensive. So I was over the moon when this dried down and it smelled like cherry in the air. And it really, really does. It smells very, very close. Close enough that I don't miss cherry in the air anymore. I'm so excited to have this. I almost didn't pick this one up and it ended up being one of my absolute favorites. So anyways, that is Secret Lady. That is very, it's like Armaf La Femme when you sniff it out of the bottle and when you very first apply it to your skin, maybe for the first 10 minutes or so, it does smell like Armaf La Femme, which is a really beautiful 
sweet, kind of creamy, fruity fragrance. When it dries after about 15 minutes, it really smells like a Scotta cherry in the air. So anyways, that one is called Secret Lady. That was a definite favorite for me. Okay, this next one, I was really on the fence about this one for a while, but I spent some time with it and I really, really like it now. This one is called Mira. I was looking at all of the fragrances that people said that this smelled like um, while I was like applying it and sniffing it on myself. When you smell it out of the bo out of the bottle, it really doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't. It didn't like remind me of anything. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of it straight out of the bottle. I just felt like it was kind of like meh. It's all right. It smells good, but it's very nondescript and doesn't smell like much. And people were saying that they felt like it smelled like YSL Cinema, which I do have YSL Cinema, so I will test this next to it. Um, on skin to see if it actually does. Um, but after about 10 minutes on my skin, when it dried down, this smells so, so much like Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Like so much like it. It's a little bit lighter and softer. It's not quite as, I don't know, Coco Mademoiselle can smell a little bit abrasive to me and it really depends on the person. Um, on some people it just smells amazing because it just works and on others it just smells kind of, I don't know, abrasive. But this is like a, a little bit sweeter, softer, it's like Coco Mademoiselle with rounded edges. It's so darned good and I've never been a huge fan of Coco Mademoiselle on myself but after I tried this oil and I smelled how it dried down on me, it smelled so good on me, and so I I was super happy. I was like, yay, it's like I have a version of Coco Mademoiselle that smells good on me that I can wear. It's beautiful. So anyways, that one is Mira. It smells very much like Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Okay, this next one is called Lubna. This one, it's very pretty. Um, it's a, re yeah, it's really, really nice. Out of the bottle, this is one that immediately, when I smelled it in the bottle, it reminded me of Dior J'adore. It definitely is like a warm floral, it smells very, very similar to J'adore. But on my skin, it really didn't. Um, after it dried down, it didn't, it was just really this beautiful, warm floral. And it didn't really give me J'adore vibes anymore after it dried down but it is really, really pretty. It's a sweet, warm floral. And yeah, out of the bottle, it smells so much like J'adore. I immediately recognized it. And I might try layering them. I may try putting this oil on and then layering J'adore over just to see what it does. But yeah, the dry down was not so much J'adore anymore, but still a really beautiful, sweet, warm floral. So yeah, that one is called, that one is called Lubna and it's so good. It's funny because I had, so I had seven oils, seven Al Rahab oils myself, and then I ordered a ton from Al Rashad and those all got here first and I loved almost every single one of them. And then I really wanted Cobra because people were telling me that it smelled like the original poison but I could, but Al Rashad is sold out of Cobra. So I had to go on eBay and eBay, one of the eBay sellers would do like a buy three, get one free. So I just picked out four different oils. And it's funny because the, the last four that came are really, they're like, none of them are amazing. They're not, none of them are as good as all of the ones that I've had before, which is just funny. Okay, this next one. This one is called Nar Nargis. Nargis, and oh man, is this one beautiful. So this one gets compared to Eclat d'Arpege from Lanvin, and it does remind me of that, but Lan Eclat d'Arpege is not this sweet, and it's fresher and crisper, has more of a green, like a watery green vibe. And this is, it's like Eclat d'Arpege, but if you added a bunch of sweetness, because this is quite sweet. It's a light, sweet, 
crisp floral. So yeah, if you love Eclat de Arpege, but you would like, you know, maybe a sweeter version, I think you would really like this. That's basically what it is. It's beautiful. I love it. I can't wait to really give this one some love in the heat. So anyways, that one is called Nargis. Such a beautiful fragrance. Okay, this next one, this one is called Lovely. And this was one of the first ones that I tested. This is a little gem. For all of my Escada Moon Sparkle lovers out there that are lamenting the fact that they can't find a bottle of Moon Sparkle anymore, pick up Al Rahab Lovely. This is an almost perfect dupe of it. Spot on. It smells, as soon as I smelled this, and I've got a bottle of the real Moon Sparkle. Let me know if you guys want me to test all of these against their dupes and if you would want a follow-up video after I test them on skin side by side and make notes about the similarities and the differences, how good of a dupe it is. If you guys want a video like that, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. I think it would be so fun to do it. But anyways, yeah, this is spot on. The, in the, from the bottle, it's very linear. It's like from the bottle to the deep dry down on your skin, it smells exactly like a Scotta Moon Sparkle. Oh my gosh, it is so good. I love it. Escada Moon Sparkle is an old signature of mine. Um, I used to wear it all the time when I first met my husband, so it really reminds me of those days. And yeah, it's just beautiful. I love it. This was one of my top five. And I'm super excited because I'm going to use this and then layer the La Rive dupe of Moon Sparkle over it to get some more time out of it and then I don't have to use my actual bottle of Moon Sparkle. So anyways, but I will definitely test this against the original Moon Sparkle to see how good of a dupe it is. This is even cheaper than the La Rive dupe. Anyways, that one is called Lovely. Oh my gosh, we're gonna be here forever. Okay. And then the next one we have, these are, this is the last of the ones that I got from Al Rashad. This one is called Diamond. Okay, Diamond, I really, really enjoy this fragrance, but I can't, there's nothing that I can think of that it smells like, and I remember any of the perfumes that I that people on Fragrantica were saying it smelled like, I didn't agree at all. But this is like sweet, fruity. It almost smells like Moon Sparkle, or like, I bet there's an Escada fragrance out there that this smells like. I bet there is. I bet one of the Escada fragrances in the bright bottles, like the really fruity, sugary ones, I bet this is a dupe for one of those. I just, I don't have a ton of experience with those Escada fragrances, so I can't recognize it, but I bet somebody who does recognize it would, would be able to say what this is. But it does, it smells like a sugary, sweet, fruity Escada fragrance. I really enjoy it. I love these kind of fragrances in warm weather. I just think they're fun. They make you smell super yummy. And yeah, so I really like that one. That one is called Diamond. I'm gonna sneak in this Orientica oil into this haul um, because why not? These are $3.95 and this oil is amazing. This one is called Violet Oud. So Violet Oud. I was expecting for this to smell like Violet. I love the little bottle. It's This is like rubber, which is great. If you drop it, it's not gonna break. I think this is the cutest little roller ball. This is beautiful. Um, people on Fragrantica compare it to Lancome, Lancome Hypnos. And I definitely I definitely see the similarities. I've got a little mini of Lancome Hypnos. I will definitely test them side by side to see if this actually smells like it. Um, I don't remember, Lancome Hypnos is not this, to me is not this sweet or rich smelling. It's a little bit lighter, but I haven't worn Hypnos for a very long time. So yeah, the, that's one that I really am gonna test side by side. But yeah, it's beautiful. It's sweet and creamy and maybe just the slightest bit powdery and really, really beautiful. It was one of my favorite 
oils that came. It's beautiful. I ripped it out and put it on myself immediately and it's so darned good and now I feel like I need to get back on and buy every one of them that I can get my hands on. So anyways, that is Orientica Violet Oud. It's such a beauty. Next, we're gonna talk about the ones in my collection that I already had. So yeah, because I just wanna go through these as well and let you know if they're dupes for something, if they're not, what the deal is. The first one I have is called Sabaya, and this is newer to my collection. I just got this like last week. So yeah, they're almost as new as all of the other ones. This is beautiful. This is another rose fragrance, but this is like, I don't feel like this is a dupe for anything. It's like a tart, citrusy, slightly green, sweet rose with maybe some woodiness in the base. It's really, really pretty. I really enjoy this one, but yeah, I didn't feel like it smelled like anything. It's just a really gorgeous rose fragrance. And in the dry down of this one, it's it doesn't smell like um, dated rose, but you definitely get this really beautiful, kind of fresh red rose scent underlying the entire fragrance. It's really, really beautiful in the dry down. It might be just a touch soapy. Um, it's beautiful. So that one is Sabaya, such a gorgeous fragrance. Okay, next we have got Golden Sand and Golden Sand is a 100% spot on dupe for Swiss Arabian Casablanca. It's caramely apples and oud. It's super sweet and beautiful. Yeah, I'm contemplating reselling my bottle of Casablanca just because I don't feel like I need both of them in my collection. And this one, this is a little bit sweeter than Casablanca, which is like right up my alley. So yeah, I think I'll hold on to the Golden Sand and maybe pass on my Casablanca because um, I don't wear either a ton and I would rather somebody get the use out of Casablanca rather than it just sit and go bad in my collection. So anyways, yeah, that is Golden Sand, spot on dupe for Casablanca. This next one is called So Sweet. That's another thing, Al Rashad carries all of these in a spray form as well for like $5.95, $6 for the spray form. So you could get like the spray form and the oil and layer them for less than $10, which is crazy. Anyway, So Sweet is, this is another one that doesn't remind me of anything. It's very, very unique smelling to me. This one is very hard for me to explain. It's sweet and kind of powdery. It's kind of citrusy, but without being tart. It's really, it's fresh and clean smelling. This one is really, really hard for me to describe. In fact, when I was making notes, I was like, how do I describe this one? It's so, I don't know, it's so strange, but so sweet, I don't know, it's kind of a strange name for it because it's not like over the top sweet or anything. It's got this really beautiful citrusy, um, citrusy quality that's not super, super tart. It's also a little bit powdered smelling and I don't know. It's not overly sweet though, it's really beautiful, very clean, um, it's a good one. So anyways, that one is called So Sweet. Okay. Next, we have one of my favorites. This one is called White Horse, and oh my gosh, I love this. This is like citrusy vanilla. Some very soft, what I, it smells like very soft florals. It's fresh kind of and clean, but it's super warm. It's like warm citruses and vanilla with some flowers in the background. It's beautiful, I love it. I'm super into this one. I've worn this a couple times already and it's beautiful when you put it on, it's beautiful in the dry down, it's just gorgeous. So anyways, that one is called White Horse. That is in my top five Al Rahab oils. Okay, next we've got White Musk. This one is super unisex, maybe leaning just a touch masculine, but just really, really clean. It doesn't smell a ton like White Musk though like a typical white musk. People compare this to the Body Shop white musk and I don't feel like it smells like that at all. At all. This is not a typical white musk scent. It's 
It's super clean. Just super clean and fresh and just a touch masculine smelling. And it doesn't smell like any other white musk I've ever smelled. It's really, really nice. I really like it. And that's what I love about it is that it doesn't smell like any other white musk that I've got in my collection. So it's gonna be, it's like super unique as far as a very clean white musk fragrance goes. So anyways, that one is called White Musk. Okay, next we have Soft. And this one, this one gets compared to Pink Sugar. Yeah, and it does smell like Pink Sugar, but it's definitely got some differences. It doesn't have that burnt note. It does, out of the bottle, it kind of smells like it's got that caramel, like that burnt caramel note. But on the skin, it doesn't. That totally goes away. It's much fresher than Pink Sugar. It's not quite as gourmand smelling. It's just much fresher, lighter. It's got more citrus in it. It doesn't have that licorice note. So yeah, it's similar. Very, very similar to pink sugar, but a lot of differences. It's really beautiful though. I love it. I will probably still layer it with pink sugar just to see how it does. Anyways, yeah, this is a good one. So that one is called Soft. Okay, I have Choco Musk. I'm not gonna talk about this one a ton because I wear this all the time. I've talked about it a lot. I love this fragrance. This is such, Charlotte loves this fragrance. Like, thankfully I have three of these in my, well, I've got two more after this one in my collection and I'm glad because this one is three quarters of the way gone already because we both love it and wear it. It smells like a, it smells mostly like vanilla, like a super sweet, creamy, yummy vanilla with chocolate, with like a milk chocolate. A lot of times with, and it's funny because somebody said this smells like synthetic chocolate to them and it doesn't to me. Like a lot of times that's my problem with chocolate fragrances is they just smell too synthetic. They're not creamy enough. They're not sweet enough. They're not smooth enough. They don't smell enough like melty chocolate for me to love them, but this one does. It's just so good. Yummy, creamy vanilla and chocolate. So anyways, that is Choco Musk. I adore it. That's probably my number one Al Rahab oil ever. Okay, next we've got Cobra. So these are the last four. So these are the last four, and these are the ones that I picked up from eBay. So um, yeah, this one is called Cobra. I have tested all of these ones on my skin. Um, I'm not going to lie, you guys. This does, it does smell like poison. Um a little bit out of the bottle, and when you first apply it to the skin for about the first 10 minutes, it smells like poison. But the deep dry down of this one, I don't love how it smells. Um, there's something, there's something almost a little bit plasticky smelling in the dry down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes plasticky to me reads as like dolls, like sweet doll skin or something. And sometimes I really like that but there's something weird about it because this is a vin very vintage smelling. Out of the bottle, it smells amazing. It's very vintage-y. It does really give you poison vibes, but it's spicier. It's somehow spicier than the original poison. But yeah, I really do like this. I just don't love how this dries down on my skin. Um, yeah, I get this weird, almost plasticky smell. But yeah, so that one is Cobra. It's okay. I think that one will for sure depend on skin chemistry. Okay, next I picked up this one here. This is called Zarat Hawaii. And it's funny, because I was thinking this was gonna be very tropical smelling. Um, I think it's got like coconut in the notes and, um, yeah, I think it's got like coconut in the notes and maybe even pineapple. Um, and with the name, with Hawaii in the name, I for sure thought tropical and sweet. And it's not at all, this is like fresh and masculine smelling. On me anyways. It smells totally different out of the bottle than it does dried down on my skin. I really like it. It's beautiful. It's very... It's really very classy smelling when it dries down. It smells expensive. It smells soft and fresh and clean. A little bit woody, a little bit citrusy. 
definitely some kind of a fruit in the middle, but it's not sweet at all. It maybe just a touch sweet, just a touch sweet. Yeah, but it's mostly kind of masculine leaning, very fresh, citrusy and a little bit woody and a little bit sweet. It's really pretty. I really like this one. It smells, this one's to me smells a lot more expensive than it is for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's really nice. So anyways, that one is called Zarat Hawaii. Next we have got Cherry Flower. This was my favorite of, I think this is my favorite of the four. Well, no, I think that Zara at Hawaii. Yeah, I think it might be my favorite of the, these four, but this would be my second favorite. This one's really pretty. This one, oh, I threw the box like a dummy. This one is called Cherry Flower. So it's called Cherry Flower. And this one, it's a cherry blossom fragrance, and it's funny, this one immediately gets compared to Japanese Cherry Blossom from Bath & Body Works, which out of the bottle, mm, smells a little bit like it, but this is way, way sweeter. It also gets compared to Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Cherry Blossom, which I'm going to be layering these, definitely. Um, it doesn't, you definitely get that very distinct green tea in Elizabeth Arden with cherry being kind of an afterthought. This is really, really sweet cherry blossom. You definitely get that kind of traditional smelling cherry blossom, but this is way sweeter. It's good, I love this one. And I can't wait to put this on and then layer my green tea cherry blossom over it. It's really, really good. If you love cherry blossom, but you want it something a little bit sweeter, here it is. It's, this is a pretty sweet cherry blossom and it's gorgeous. I will probably layer my L'Occitane cherry blossom fragrance over this as well. I think it will be amazing. So anyways, that one is called Cherry Flowers, so good. And then last but not least, holy cow, if you guys made it through this video, Thank you so much, you're a trooper, because this has been a super, super long one. Um, this one is called A Seal. And this one, this one is actually really, really nice. Yes, oh my gosh. This one is so good. This smells like a Montel fragrance for sure. It doesn't, out of the bottle it kind of does. And when you first apply it, it definitely starts to smell more like it, but the deep dry down of this, smells, I haven't smelled the exact fragrance that this is supposed to be a dupe for, but I can totally see it in my head. I could see this being a dupe for a Montel fragrance. It smells very, very much like it. This is definitely more of a cold weather one for me. Oh man, this is so good. So this is supposed to be a dupe of Montel Oud Rose Petals, and this is beautiful. It's soft, but there's a really prominent fresh rose note in it. And then it's softened by a really beautiful oud that isn't super overpowering. It doesn't overpower the rose. It's got a warmth. This one is a very, very warm rose and oud fragrance. This has also got some saffron in it. And saffron can go badly for me. Usually I really don't like saffron in fragrance. A lot of times it does not work for me, but this one, it's perfect. It's, there's not enough of it that it overpowers the fragrance or that you can even really detect it. It's, it's definitely there. There's like a hint of it, but it's, yeah. I feel like even people that don't like saffron would be okay with this because it's not, it's definitely not overpowering, but this is beautiful. When, when this one dries down, it definitely smells like like an expensive Montel fragrance. It's good. So anyways, that one is called Essile. Such a good one. Oh my gosh, I've got 24 Al Rahab oils here. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys are interested again in me doing side-by-side -side comparisons of the ones that are supposed to be dupes that I have the original for. And for me to do a follow-up, I would love to do that. I think it'd be fun as well as helpful. But I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.